观众朋友们，大家好，我是 Word Up Dr. J， and I want to welcome you to the Dr. J's Literature Lab. 我们要听故事，学习英文。Now, like you know, we've been learning about Part One and Part Two of the tragic, sad tale of Medusa. Let's now go on to Part Three. Poseidon attempted to seduce Medusa, but he failed. Angry and frustrated, Poseidon chased Medusa to Athena's temple and raped her right there on the altar of the temple. Since Poseidon had raped Medusa, this automatically made her his wife, because at the time women were, in my opinion, treated as objects by men. Horrified that Poseidon had desecrated her best temple and priestess. Athena turned Medusa, the poor victim of Poseidon, into a horrible and hideous creature, with snakes for hair, scales for skin, and a face that could petrify anyone who looked at it. Medusa, who was in her heart a kind and loving girl, was banished to the mountains and hid from people to keep innocent people from. Turning into stone if they looked at her. One day, while slithering around catching rodents, Medusa found a statue of Athena. I know Athena was angry at me, but I will show her my loyalty by making another temple here for her. And so Medusa began to worship Athena, and cleaned out an older place. To make her a temple, but little did she know. But the gods had sent the brave warrior Perseus up to the pitch black mountains to slay the horrible creature that was petrifying everyone who looked at her. Before going to the mountains, however, Perseus was given three magic items by the gods. That he would need to be able to slay the mortal creature. Many stories have different ideas about who gave Perseus which gift, but many people say that Perseus was given wings that made him invisible by Hermes, the messenger of the gods, a magical sword that could bend when used to strike opponents from another god. And even the cape of Hades, that helped make him invisible. He also received a mirrored shield from Athena, so that he would not need to look into Medusa's eyes and become instantly petrified. So high up in the mountains, Perseus lay hiding in the pitch dark to ambush Medusa. Medusa, who was praying in Athena's temple, the temple she had made, although she knew it was Athena who had turned her into a horrible creature, suddenly heard a noise. The snakes on her head started making a huge commotion with a loud sssss. Perseus jumped out of the dark and said, "And now we will fight to the death." And slashing wildly, the brave Perseus struck at the snakes on Medusa's head with his magic sword. And using the magic items given to him, he flashed his mirror shield at Medusa. "You will die like the rest! How dare you ambush me!" hissed Medusa. But unlike all the other warriors who had been turned into stone by Medusa when they looked at her. He hid behind his shiny mirrored shield so as not to become petrified. Then all of a sudden, Perseus lifted the shiny shield and magic sword and shouted, "Take this, you evil snake lady monster! I will decapitate you!" <laughs> Off rolled Medusa's head with the <laughs> swoosh, and it rolled to the ground like a bloody ball. While Perseus watched Medusa's body bleeding on the ground, he realized the blood was like a river. In fact, 
Later people said that it was this blood that created all of the world's snakes. Anyway, Perseus stood watching the river of blood and Medusa's dead body. Can you imagine how shocked he was to see two creatures, Chrysior and Pegasus, emerge from the hole in her neck? And who are these two boy creatures, he asked himself, only to realize that they were her sons from her relationship with Poseidon. Perseus took Medusa's head, careful not to look at it because it still had the power to petrify people, and put it into the magic bag the gods had given him. And he later presented it to Athena. However, Athena, seeing that Medusa had created a temple for her and realizing how loyal she had been, Athena felt pity for what she had done to the innocent priestess. To pay back Medusa's spirit, Athena decided to place Medusa's head on her shield to honor the innocent and chaste princess who had remained loyal to her, although she had experienced such a tragic and unfair fate. So, what is the moral of this story? First of all, one lesson we can learn from Medusa is that we should always be aware of evil people like Poseidon who might use us to get their revenge on other people. And finally, according to Gianni Versace, the founder of Versace, he believed that putting Medusa on his logo would make people fall in love with the people who wore the clothes and shoes his company made. So what do you think? I think Medusa was an innocent victim, and I feel sorry for her. Now, please leave a comment below and let us know what you think, or whether or not you have ever experienced a similar such experience in your life. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, woman, okay, with our example sentences, and we can Okay. The first word is attempt. Now, attempt means to try to achieve or complete something difficult. Zhongwen is something like si si kan. We use this a lot, especially, for example, I will attempt to reach my goals. We say this a lot with our goals. And in the story, we say, if he was going to be successful in his attempts to ambush Medusa, Perseus would need some magic objects from the gods to help him fight his opponent, Medusa. If he was going to be successful in his attempt to ambush Medusa, Perseus would need some magic objects from the gods to help him fight his opponent, Medusa. The next word is frustrate. Okay, now to frustrate is when you prevent a plan or an attempted action from progressing, succeeding, or being fulfilled, okay? To frustrate means to get in the way of somebody when they're trying to do something, okay? For example, you can frustrated the word of Dr. J. Literature, okay? We don't want you to be frustrated. Now, let's look at the sentence. Poseidon was very frustrated that he was unable to seduce the chaste Medusa. So he decided to force her to become his wife by raping her. Poseidon was very frustrated that he was unable to seduce the chaste Medusa. So he decided to force her to become his wife by raping her. The next word is object. Object. Now, this word, you must open your mouth when you say it. It's like in Chinese, like 一个东西还是米家, okay? And this is something that is material that you can see or you can touch, okay? Now, an example sentence is, in the old times, such as when the story of Medusa happened, men treated women like objects that they could own and possess. 
In the old times, such as when the story of Medusa happened, men treated women like objects that they could own and possess. The next word is victim. Now, victim in Chinese is something like shou hai zhe, the, someone who is harmed or injured or killed because of an accident or an event or an action that someone else does. Now, let's look at this example sentence because it's very beautiful. Medusa's story is very sad because she was just a chaste young priestess doing her job who became the victim of Poseidon's fantasies of revenge against Athena. Medusa's story is very sad because she was just a chaste young priestess doing her job who became the victim of Poseidon's fantasies of revenge against Athena. Ah, oh, oh, I hate this Poseidon. The next word is banish. To banish is just, just to send someone away. Tuki, 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 tuki. Okay. Send somebody away maybe to, to another country or a place. And this is a word that we use very frequently in the old days. If you take a test, they will usually use this word because many people do not say it in everyday language. Let's look at the sentence. Athena was so angry that Medusa had hurt her reputation that she turned her into a phenomenally ugly creature and banished her to the mountains above Greece. Athena was so angry that Medusa had hurt her reputation that she turned her into a phenomenally ugly creature and banished her to the mountains above Greece. The next word is rodent. Rodent. Now, rodent is another way to say rat mice, squirrels, hamsters, porcupines, and any little animal with big teeth. Okay, 老鼠. Now, I'll show you one thing. The percent of the animals in the world are rodents. Okay? Okay. So let's look at this sentence. Poor Medusa was banished to the mountains by Athena to live in the pitch darkness and eat rodents and small snakes to survive. Poor Medusa was banished to the mountains by Athena to live in the pitch darkness and eat rodents and small snakes to survive. Opponent. Chinese, we would say, We say this very frequently whenever we play a basketball game or a football game or any sport. And that is someone who competes with or opposes another in a contest, game, or even an argument. Let's look at the example sentence. Because the gods had given him the magic weapons, Perseus was able to defeat his dangerous opponent that had snakes for her hair and who could petrify anyone who even looked at her. Because the gods had given him the magic weapons, Perseus was able to defeat his dangerous opponent that had snakes for hair and who could petrify anyone who even looked at her. The next word we say very commonly, especially in politics, to decapitate. D means away. Cap is another way to say your head. So to decapitate someone means to cut off their head. Let's look at the example sentence. Using his magic sword and the magic shield that had been given to him by the gods, Perseus was able to decapitate the horrible opponent that he had successfully ambushed. Using his magic sword and the mirror shield that had been given to him by the gods, Perseus was able to decapitate the horrible opponent that he had successfully ambushed. The next word is pity. We say this all the time. In Chinese, we'd say, Oh, ni hao ke lian na, hao ke xia, hao ke xia, ni hao ke lian na. And we say this a lot too. 
And the definition is the feeling of sorrow or compassion caused by the suffering or the misfortune of other people. For example, if you have a friend who just broke up with his or her girlfriend or boyfriend or whoever, you'd say, oh, it's such a pity. I pity you. You must feel so lonely. Now, let's look at the sentence. Later, Athena began to feel great pity for Medusa because she realized that Medusa had remained loyal to her. So she put Medusa's head on her shield to honor her. Later, Athena began to feel great pity for Medusa because she realized that Medusa had remained loyal to her. So she put Medusa's head on her shield to honor her. The next word is emerge. Emerge. Now, emerge is something like 出来, just a 出去, okay, to go away from, to leave, 出去, 出去, to emerge from something. And you need to know the root of this is merge. E means away. This means to move out of or away from something and become visible. So something that was not visible before becomes visible. Let's look at the sentence. Perseus stood over Medusa's decapitated body and not only watched her blood flow into a river, but he also so saw Medusa and Poseidon's two sons emerge from the hole in her neck. Perseus stood over Medusa's decapitated body and not only watched her blood flow into a river, but he also saw Medusa and Poseidon's two sons emerge from a hole in her neck. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we hope that you have enjoyed learning these stories with us. Please tune in and watch more of the Word Up Dr. J Literature Lair to have even more exposure to more exciting stories, and we will bring your English to the next level. Thank you.